All right, Titans League action, people. Welcome to the Wall, a really fun map. Um, again, made many videos on it. Uh, there's plenty on the channel if you want to check it out. But it's a unique arena map, but it's not arena. And in Titans League Season 3, I decided against including Arabia and Arena. Uh, but we have similarities. And so here, uh, FedEx and Repar both going to be pretty comfortable. They're both pretty good on closed maps. Uh, but it's just that the wall does not give them any vision. Z wall, I should say, is a Gaia wall, which you eventually have to fight through uh, to try and compete and kill the other players. So I got to add context here. Yes, this is one Age of Empires 2 game, but it carries a lot more weight than your average Age of Empires 2 game, okay? So this is a play all three in Titans League Gold, and uh, Gold is essentially 25th through 48th place in the world, Okay. These players are fighting to stay alive because they could be relegated uh, and, and kicked out of gold if their performances aren't good enough. But um, their their hope is possibly even to get promoted into the top 24 in the world and platinum for the next season. So every game matters, meaning every win counts. And at the conclusion of the group stage, you add up all the wins and, uh, you know, tally up the results to see where things go. Coming into this game... Uh, we're going to have the results up. We had just covered one of the pre sets prior, so hopefully Hardy can get it right. Coming into this game, this is the situation in this group. Forget the top two. You have MBL, I think, ahead, Dark, right behind him, number one and number two. You have Kazva after three rounds with three wins. You have Nilly after three rounds with three wins. And then these two have played two rounds, and they both have two wins. So whoever wins this series especially if it's like a 3-0 either way, they leapfrog three other players. It, it could be huge for them uh, because Dark and MBL have looked really good against anyone they run into. Um, I think my favorite is... Oh, God. I mean, I don't know what the map pool is going to be. I think my favorite's FedEx. And I, I'm going to say my favorite is FedEx as we see Rapard using the scout to bring in the boar. That's a bit unique. We'll talk about that. Um, because FedEx, I think he's a bit underrated. I think he's in really good shape right now compared to Rapard. Now, I haven't played against Rapard in a while, but I have played against FedEx. I also covered, uh, FedEx in silver. He was promoted from silver to get here in gold. I just have a lot of belief in the guy. I think he's a really exciting player here. So, we'll see if Rapard proves me wrong. Rapard constantly brings such a high level in tournaments. And he's, like, the player that, like, no one really knows about, um... I mean, he's going to struggle to stay alive, possibly, in this group. But he's a really good player. Uh, he's got ice in his veins, would be the way I would describe it. Okay, so Turks for FedEx. With Turks, we could always expect unique unit play uh, with their Janissary. On an arena map, you would see Light Cav. But here, I don't think Light Cav give you a ton of value. Because your Light Cav can't pass the wall. You'd have to fight through it. Um, and then we've got Portuguese on this side. Portuguese also really good with their gunpowder. They've got cheaper gold units. And I'm going to assume that we are going to see monks from Rapard. I think the reason that he weakened his scout to bring in the boars is because he is going to add monks in some capacity and just heal up this scout. If he's not going to add monks early and this scout somehow dies because it's, you know, was used for that, I could see that as a uh, mistake. But quite a few relics to fight for. Uh, the relics are always along the wall. It is not relic victory. Um, the videos I've uploaded with this uh, from another tournament had relic victory and wonder victory enabled. So sorry for the people that wanted to see that. Uh, we thought about it, but I didn't want... Like, if I was going to do that, I would want the whole tournament to be relic or wonder victory. And I wasn't sure the whole map pool suited it. So, I mean, the map still produces some excellent games. But maybe in the future. I just, honestly, things were so um, busy trying to get things structured for this event. It was just something that had to be on the back burner a bit. Usually you've got a stone and a gold safe behind your TC, kind of like what FedEx has here. Uh, and then the other stones and golds are a bit more exposed towards that front area. So what we're seeing a lot from players who are playing as the Turks or like Spanish or any good gunpowder civilization... They will drop the castle, and they drop the castle in the middle, near the wall. If FedEx has... There's also wolves, so you got to be careful with. So he's actually placed some palisades here as reminders that there's animals there. 
Yeah, they're both kind of scouted the wall a bit to see how far it goes. It should always go to the edge of the map, not to a tree line. And wouldn't you know it, we've got Repard heading to stone right now. So we could see organ guns versus Janissaries because we've got stone for both. It's going to be a clown fest here, folks. Yeah, if, if any of my live viewers have questions, uh, feel free to ask. Obviously, if you're watching on YouTube later on, give me a shout, leave a comment, say hi. Fun fact that I've given about FedEx before, he is a grandmaster in chess um, who has played Age of Empires for 10 plus years. Has gone inactive many times, but has been fairly active this year. Pretty wild, man. Like, some people are just good at everything, right? Um, he's traveled and gone to many chess tournaments before. I'm not a big chess guy myself, but I recognize how ridiculous it is that he's at the level he is. Um, and, uh, have interacted many times with FedEx, played against him many times. Yeah, he's, he's a really fun personality. Like, very, like, very trolly personality, at least when we talk, which I really enjoy. Like playing games like that. Whereas if I play Repard, he steals my boar at the third minute. He doesn't GG half the time, and he's extremely aggressive. No fun. <laughs> Which Civ would you prefer? I think I prefer Portuguese because I think having your gold units be discounted gives you more overall uh, value. Um, and I, I honestly, I, I do not know because I haven't seen it enough, but I actually think organ guns versus the current judiciaries might be preferable for me because you can repair them actually eh, you can't heal them which is kind of awkward so I, okay i don't know about that aspect of it but anyways judiciaries were nerfed and now they only have uh what is it seven range i think judiciaries are stronger in low numbers but it's easier to mass organ guns because of the cost and then if you go fast imp, which happens a lot, you have the Fatoria, which could be really valuable too. I think if it's arena and there it's it's not a shared wall like this, I think I would prefer Turks. On the wall, I think I prefer Portuguese. Again, half of that comes down to the cost. They're going up on very tight economies here. Portuguese getting a bit of wood when they take the berries feels good to me. And then the, their unit would only cost wood and gold. Whereas you need food if you're FedEx. I don't know what he's planning on doing with these with these wolves here. Like, I guess he should... If he's going to drop the castle forward, he needs to drop it around here then, right? Both players need to be very mindful of where the castles are. Because let's say FedEx castle's here. I think for Repard, you might want a castle here. Both need to basically block the opponent's... Um path that they're going to break open with their castle oh god he just okay he just brings the bills i mean what are you gonna do you're not gonna lose the villager there if you pay attention and he wants the castle here now the way repart has built up his base is quite interesting it looks like he wants a more defensive castle instead of going out our out, out ugh, yeah out towards the wall he might be scared about the Turk fast imp because of the Bombard Cannon play. Here's Res collected. Repart has collected more. Quite a bit more, actually, for this stage of the game. And Repard going to... Oh, maybe lose a Villager here. It's going to be very close. He should be fine now. He sees this. And yeah, he's going to drop a castle here. So yeah, this is where it gets interesting because FedEx will choose a wall... I think he will choose here or here. I actually think I'm going to get the right, the, the correct stone piece too. It's either this one or this one. Oh, it could be this one. Oh man, that's... Come on. Come on, FedEx. Which one did he click? Oh, I got it wrong. Okay, obviously that's like not that big a deal. But, so he could still go through here. Had he gone this way, he can't really get a lot of value from going this direction. So this is really good for him. But remember, Janissaries cost food. We're going to see double Monastery from Repard. Monks have nine range. Uh, monks are already on the way. And we see some stone walls for Repard as well. This is still wide open, though. 
And the light cap's going to show up. Light cap's going to see the castle now. And so kind of awkward to maneuver here. Both players need to be very careful. <laughs> Do you see that monk just snag the relic and up into the castle? Dude, this is wide open. This almost doesn't feel real. It feels like a trap. Oh, when it is a trap. Dinistri's got baited into the castle fire. Now there's only one. And look at the resources. You just don't have the food to make more Dinistri's right now. The light cap can counter monks. But you've got to be careful. There's a lot of monks out there, FedEx. He's going to run away. Might lose the light cap. The monks have been converting for a bit. The light cap is probably just going to die in the end. But so does the scout, though. Okay, so now I think after seeing this many monks and seeing the Janissaries, you kind of feel like, what do I do? Now, you don't really have the economy to necessarily switch into light cap. I'm not even sure if going light cap is the play if your opponent also has organ guns. It's really hard to know. It seems like FedEx's decision is just, he's just like, Janissary is a good unit. I could still just kind of kill everything. That's kind of the hope. Whereas Rapart is thinking fast him. Look at that. Selling wood, buying food, stopped Vil production. He has to be careful, though, because he stopped monk production, too. And stopping monk production means he might not have an answer to these Janissaries. And seven range now. These things were nerfed. And that, that extra... Or the, the lack of range could be a big problem compared to these monks. And where do you go? You have to run to your castle... Rapard chooses to back away, though. Feels like maybe the fast imp idea was a little early here. And, oh, Rapard's going to add rams. Or, or, sorry, not Rapard. FedEx is going to add rams. That's an interesting decision. I bet you Rapard's annoyed that he didn't just build a mining camp on the gold here. Oh, man. His monk control so good. He gets one conversion. That guy might switch sides. Also, we're going to see Atonement here in a second. That is the most stubborn Janissary ever. Okay. So Atonement now means you can convert enemy monks. It's a clown fest here on the wall. We are going to see this monk switch sides. Definitely. And then he's going to die instantly to the castle. No, he won't. There's no easy way for Rapard to know his opponent's going to have rams. <laughs> I'm really excited. Basically... What Imp gives you if you're a pard is it gives you uh, the monk upgrades, give your monks more range, and, you know, a couple other things too, but that's the main one. Um, and then it gives you access to trebs. But if you lose your castle to the ram push, you're completely screwed here. And there's no answer to rams. God, the rams pathing is going to be a nightmare here though, right? I think it will be. Uh, there's just no way that when he goes to send these rams through, the game's going to cooperate with him. <laughs> it's just, it's just going to be annoying. Look at the economy. Look how much is on gold. I mean, if you bring the vills, th so the ram play, it might not work because if vills come over immediately and him having more vills here is actually crucial, he could always fight it off. Siege Tower! Let's go, baby! Siege Tower in the queue! Oh, man. Oh, dude, don't lose. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, oh, God. Oh, this is bad. Oh, he doesn't have... Oh, no. Guys, he's gonna lose. Run away! <laughs> he's gonna... He could lose all of his men to the monks. The monks are fleeing to the castle, though. I mean, you've gotta go now. This is the time. He's got five rams. The sixth is on the way. You gotta go now. Siege Tower would actually be epic here. Because you could just zoom right up to the monks. Siege Tower would be huge. Let's go, baby. FedEx has really taken some time for this shipment. This, is, this video is not sponsored by FedEx. But FedEx, if you want to sponsor me, totally open to making some fun jokes about it. But yeah, for the time being, we're just going to say that FedEx does not ship these rams and siege towers fast enough for our liking. Okay, here we go. Here go the rams. Oh, God. Oh, there's another hole there. Okay. Here's your party. He's about to hit him. I love this map. Surprise, buddy. Not supplies, but surprise. We've got rams. Okay. Siege tower is going to choo-choo right underneath this castle. You ready? 
Choo choo. <laughs> this is epic. This is so epic. If the castle goes down, it could be game over. But then who knows? There's going to be monks as well. Okay. So here we go. Choo choo. We've got a delivery. Special delivery here. Yeah. Whoop. Right back into the tower. All right. Special delivery. Special delivery. Whoop. Sorry. We got to return on this delivery. All right. Great. Back of the siege tower. Can we get out again? Whoop. Okay. More monks have to die. Or villagers have to die. These guys didn't have a siege tower, but they're not really that upset about it. They actually kind of are. And wait a second. There's like no judiciaries anymore. Uh. Okay. Castle is really struggling. But in the end, it's going to stay up. And the villagers against the ram here might actually be enough to win this game for Rapart. I mean, that was everything for FedEx. FedEx has way more vills, but he could lose his castle. I mean, I'm concerned about the siege tower too. He could lose the siege tower. And there's going to be 10 monks, so Rapard can just convert anything that's ever made. Wow, what a hold there from Rapard. I'm also really disappointed... Like, really sad that the Siege Tower play didn't work, because that would have been epic. But I think it's one of those situations where we have to acknowledge the brilliance on both sides. Rapard somehow got enough conversions, and having the amount of villagers that he did near all of that was crucial for him. He lost nine villagers. He doesn't have a lot of hills, but, you know, he's still an Imperial Age trying to get the job done here. I thought the Siege Tower is for the Eco. Um, the Siege Tower for the Eco would have been exciting, but if he didn't have army underneath that castle, they would have never taken it out. That is a lot of monks. The monks are very cheap with Portuguese. These monks have 12 range. This is a problem. You, you don't need me to say that, but it's my job to say it anyways. This is a problem. And now we got stables for FedEx, so he's thinking I can go like Cav, but can you? If you had six of them right now, I still don't even know if you'd have enough because the monks are just freaking everywhere. Oh, relics. Those relics could be taken home. That'd be satisfying for Rapard. And remember what we said earlier, Portuguese can just make Fatoria now too. So FedEx is, is probably staring at the screen right now like, are you kidding me? Probably a little frustrating. And again, in terms of the whole series here in TTL Gold, like this is huge. Every win is so important here. There's the shipment. Uh, if you convert a production building, what happens to units that might still be inside? Um, they have an identity crisis and they just disappear. They, they don't know. They just leave the world. No, that's not what happens. Um, like if this stable were to get converted right now, the second it turns into a red stable, the blue units pop out. They might still have an identity crisis, but we have no way of knowing that. Still maybe winnable for FedEx if he kills all of this. Like, the problem I see is that I consider organ guns to still be a pretty good unit. And then with 12 range on these monks and so many of them, you have to expect that there's going to be a conversion. Choo-choo! Siege Tower coming in clutch again. Here go the Rams too. Okay. I mean, you don't really want to hop out of the Siege Tower right now. This is just a distraction. Okay, there go the light calf, but FedEx knows that those things could be converted. And the rams are going for the trebs. Let's go. Let's go. No answer to my rams. Bam. Ram, bam. Thank you, ma'am. I never said that. Um, yeah, this is rough. I, I like the Spearman edition from her part as well, because he knows light calf is the main threat. And the GG is called. Rapard wins the game. Look at the most created unit there. 26 monks versus 25 Janissaries. And again, we kind of said it like the Janissaries really need to pack a punch early. They're a very expensive unit. FedEx paid a lot of resources for the units that he, he created in this game. And Portuguese having the very cheap monks and then also Rapard using them quite nicely was really nice. He, he, the second he saw that it was castle v castle here he thought this is a race to imp and again I, I consider the main difference to be what type of resource do you have to spend if you're fedex you're spending the same type of resources that you would need to go to imperial age so it's a really good call from rapard to simply just use his food and use his gold towards imp 
which ended up making a bit of a difference. But it was really close. Like, the Siege Tower play was, was so epic. I'm really curious what happens if, um, like, let's say the castle goes down and the Treb goes down. What happens then? Like, Rapard won't be able to push at all. I mean, especially if FedEx's castle stays up. So I think there's a world where you, know, you don't even have any army if you're FedEx. Uh, and as long as you've taken out the castle and the trap, you're in a pretty good spot. It was pretty darn close here, man. I wanted to see... I wanted to kind of re-watch this and just see how many conversions end up happening, if you guys don't mind. Like, look, the second the Janistries pop out, he's wololoing. He's like, all right, here we go. Castle Fire also did decent damage there. It's really hard to get the right spots. I mean, it was messy. Both players took pretty significant losses. The castle itself, though, ended up killing seven units. And then this is where you start to see a lot of conversions come in. And then Villagers did just enough. It was... It's not like... Rapard had a lot on stone, though. He was buying the stone. There was a lot of panicking there. And that is a really good game. So, for those of you that really enjoyed this game and are like, whoa, I want to see what happens at the rest of the games. T90 said this cool stuff about Titans League, blah, 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 at the start. Um, in the event that you want to see the rest of the games, uh, the rest of the series will be listed in the description and is uploaded live on my extra channel. Um, here's the total resources collected. FedEx actually collected more. But he didn't get as much value from his units. 17 conversions for Rapard. He was converting expensive units, and he didn't pay full price for those monks because of the Portuguese. Pretty wild stuff. But yeah, uh, important games coming up between these two. And I uh, kind of feel like FedEx is going to have a good home map prepped to maybe tie up the series. We'll move along. But yeah, hope people enjoyed the, the game. All right, so just switching up the colors here. But um, I'm going to assume that anyone who's watching game number two already saw the first game. But I guess we have time because it's hideout, and I could probably just repeat myself. Um, as it stands, this is the third series for both Rapard and FedEx. They came into this series tied for fifth or sixth place. They're at the bottom of their group. So it is a dogfight, and they both need wins. Rapard now has three wins in total. FedEx has two. If FedEx wins this game, then suddenly they're both tied at three total wins. And then... You have Kazva and you have Nilly, who are also sitting at three total wins. But they, of course, played all three of their rounds. So odds are looking pretty good that Rapard or FedEx here, more so Rapard after winning the first game, could maybe leapfrog the three-win mark after three rounds and get above some of the other players in the group. It would be like a huge 3-0 for Rapard. He goes up to five wins, and then you've got like a bunch of other players in the dust behind him. You got Vietnamese for FedEx. An interesting choice here, guys, for Haida. Like, they were buffed recently, economically. I think, I don't think they needed a buff. I'm just going to say it. I don't think the devs are going to backtrack on it. I'm not even advocating for it. But I think Vietnamese have always been really good. I think people have been slightly misplaying them. Uh, but now that they've got eco upgrades where they do not spend their, what is it, their wood on their eco upgrades, right? Which is what they had before but also their eco upgrades research faster. Plus they've got insane elephants, insane archers, insane trash, good techs for late game. Um, yeah, I think the Civ could be strong. I think it also could be really strong against the Mayans because Mayans are normally relying on eagles or they're relying on archers. And I think you have the tools to stop that if you're the Vietnamese. I think the rats and archer, while that's really hard to get to, the rats and archer is just the archer slayer. Also pretty good against eagles. And then you also have champions, elephants, all those things could work. But having seen the matchup before, I feel like there's always the window, if it's a standard type of game, where the early Imperial Age Elite Eagle Warrior upgrade, especially if El Dorado comes in, it just is so difficult to stop for the Vietnamese. Because then the Vietnamese are, are in a stage where they're still probably massing their archers or they're, they need time to get to champions or elephants or whatever. Um, that's kind of my spiel as far as the Civ matchup is concerned. I like the, the Vietnamese pick. Very curious on how FedEx is going to choose to play it, though. Yeah, map is Hideout, uh, where they start with the Palisade Walls. So the first game, they had Stone Walls. There is potential for Feudal Age Regression here. But more often than not, at the high level, you don't see players do that in a tourna tournament. 
<clears throat> um, however, I see a barracks now from Rapard. So Rapard's actually going to go for Dark Age pressure, which is the last thing I expected. <laughs> so I think he's going to make a militia or two. This is more of an Arabia style build where the map is open. Uh, and you want to get some damage done before the walls are built. But they start with the walls. And Rapard is going to look to attack those walls. I mean, maybe it's worth it if you just add even just like one or two militia and you end up taking out the Palisade Gate. But I think more than likely, the units are not going to make it into FedEx's base. But FedEx, I wouldn't consider him a full-on clown, but he does prefer his close maps. Um, has a large history on Arabia, though. Does play Arabia more than, you know, some other players who prefer Arena do. But maybe Rapard's thinking, I want early control. I want to ruin his build order and ruin his comfort here. I just won the first game, feeling very good about life. Maybe he's getting down on himself. Let's just smash him. And wow, this is actually Man at Arms. Wasn't making any militia while I was rambling. And so it's just a barracks as the second Dark Age building Man at Arms built, which is not actually too far out of the meta with most civs, but still feels very unique for the Mayans anyways. But I, I prefer Man at Arms into maybe one range, way more than the early militia that i was thinking could happen sorry sometimes i'm like especially because i'm running on four hours of sleep right now and i'm heavily jet lagged sometimes i want to talk through specifics of something and they've already switched out of it and i just like kind of keep talking so but i hope the information's still helpful um talking through the possibilities is important Man at arm forward. I wonder if part of this decision making from Rapard is because he doesn't like his chances late game against Vietnamese. I think it's probably just a style thing. These three villagers are going to be heading forward here. They're going to be heading forward here. There they go. <clears throat> um, sorry, I wanted. I missed some messages here from chat. Do Vietnamese get supplies? I don't think Vietnamese get supplies. Yeah, I, I think they do not. Okay, so the rush is a little later than it could be. The range could already be on the way up. If he wants to tower, the tower could already be on the way up. All these things could have come faster, and the timings are crucial. But the rush is still happening. Um, FedEx. He knows where his opponent is. I mean, he knew where the TC was at the start because he's Vietnamese. But he scouted the walls. And he should expect an archer range behind this. Which I think is a large reason why he's now added the barracks. I don't think that was actually his original plan here. And this pressure kind of getting to him right now. Barracks is not going to be completed in time for him to make his own range. And you can tell his resources were set up to make two buildings. They are set up to make barracks. Uh, sorry, a blacksmith and a market. So now he's not going to have the wood to be able to go for what will probably be an archer range and a blacksmith. So this is affecting his build, and if they're both going into the ranged units, Rapard's already got the lead with the ranged units. And the idea behind this push is just to disrupt the build and force some mistakes. Okay, apparently Vietnamese do get supplies. Interesting. Tony, man, Vietnamese, they're really stacked. <laughs> Alright, damage control from FedEx. He prepped the walls here ahead of time. It's like he knew he was going to lose that area and all oh, he was so lucky not to lose the villager there didn't have loom tower has not been built from Rapard. i'm curious if he'll do it now and he will do you counter tower this is the question if you're fedex i feel like you just do yeah you you don't want this archer range to be disrupted too much also fedex he decided that he's going to just stay in feudal here Instead of trying to squeeze by the Castle Age when his build has been disrupted and not get any invest into any long-term eco upgrades, he went for the wood upgrade, went for the farm upgrade. So this is no longer a fast castle from him. See, FedEx is thinking about maybe rewalling this. But for now, his defense has been very solid. A couple houses here. He's got skirmishers. And honestly, Rapard needs to be careful because I, I don't know what more he can do besides what he's doing right now, but I say he needs to be careful because 
if he loses this tower and this gets rewalled, everything in here is trapped and will probably eventually die. And he should recognize that, so he's going to be increasingly stubborn here as he's sending archers into the tower and both players are going to repair. Lots of wood from FedEx put into houses. Very few into farms. Look at the farming eco for Rapard. This is what this type of rush can do. I personally uh, am a big fan of Bandit Arm Tower on this map. I do it a lot. But I'm also normally up against clown players. <laughs> I consider FedEx to be a lot more capable on, on like against this type of rush than your average arena player might be. And wow, he's he's been aggressive here. You gotta be careful with his villagers, but he's actually kind of sort of got the job done here. He's killed most of the archers. He did lose a villager. But then these villagers are trapped, and he has rewalled it. It's 7 to 1 eco KD. Uh, sorry, 7 to 1 total KD right now for FedEx. And he has the skirms. He had the fletching upgrade. He got the timing completely right there. It was almost like he wanted Rapard to do this with how comfortable he looked. Wow. And now, of course, like, you've got no pressure on you. You know you're heading villagers. Your eco's looking pretty good, so you could start to think if, uh, about things a little bit more. Just breathe. Place some farms there. Uh, the skirmisher's gonna die to the villager, which is kind of funny. But yeah, FedEx trying to balance his economy now. I do want to check res collected. And res collected still very even. Uh, food and gold collected a bit higher for Rapard. But every arena player knows the most important building is the market. And I don't think we're too far away from that market here for FedEx. Who, again, still has some villagers walking around the map in positions he might not wish to be in. And there's the market for Rapard. And he sells some res, buys some res, looks to rush up towards Castle, and bam. Dang, that's still a really impressive time, honestly. <laughs> that is a really impressive time. He will be in Castle Age sub 20 minutes after losing three villagers and rushing and going like archers and fletching. That's a really impressive. Problem here is he's got one barracks. So he wants to go eagles, but he doesn't even have the second barracks yet. He's not going to have a lot of um, units to really threaten his opponent with when he gets to the next stage. Hey, Josh, thanks for the stars, man. I'm glad you were at the meetup, right? I think you were at the meetup. I'm pretty sure we talked. Um, sorry, I think there were multiple Joshes at the meetup. But I appreciate the stars, man. It was nice meeting you. Glad I can make it over there. I am freaking exhausted because I'm not back to my uh, schedule. But it was worth it. I I'm hoping we can get a pretty cool edit together so people can um, re relive some of the moments from the Aussie meetup. I think people who weren't there for the meetup which was, you know, obviously 99.9% .9 of my audience, <laughs> uh, will really enjoy the, the 4v4 game we played and, and at least recap of the event. I'm much taller than you thought. What, do you think I'm short? I don't recall if you were short. I would say you're probably average height. But hey, it's better than me being much shorter than you thought, so... <laughs> This is a bit interesting that there was no resistance from Rapard here. It's almost like he wanted this to happen. And here he is with the Eagles. They do get seven base attacks starting in the uh, Castle Age. And I don't think he's going to complain too much about clearing this up. We have a Siege Workshop over here for Rapard. So he walked around there. He wants a Siege push there, but his buildings are kind of scattered all over. Certainly making this chaotic. You need to kill this whole army, right? If you're going to show your army like this, you need to kill this whole army. FedEx going for supplies. So I'm glad we clarified whether or not supplies was an option. And with supplies, he'll be able to go long sorts. But he might actually be able to do it in combination with some archers. There's still just one eagle there. A little... Okay, so I mean, the, the main push is building. But you could tell that Rapard really didn't have a lot to work with economically. Does FedEx have any idea this is happening? Oh, he doesn't. Oh, this could be tricky because you've got your opponent's going to have vision here and he's going to have eagles on this side. And then if he has eagles and siege on this side, it's going to be tough as well. I think where it gets tough for Rapard is that his units are split. 
So it's very easy to lose this army and be like, oh crap. And then suddenly there's more army over here. You kind of want to be working from the same spot. Oh, you're five seven. Okay. All right. Well, then you're. There is a pretty big height difference between us. <laughs> it's kind of a funny palisade wall there. Double barracks, man at arms. Longsword upgrade isn't in yet. Alarm bells will be going off in FedEx's mind and in his ears now as he's playing his game because there's a siege push all of a sudden. Surprise! 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 But longsword upgrade is on the way. There will be six of those bad boys, and they can deal with the Siege and the Eagles. The Archers actually become really important for Rupard right now, and the Siege Micro needs to be good for Rupard. Three Mangonels can absolutely kill the Longswords. The FedEx might have the Villager lead, but the efficiency might dip down now because he's under so much pressure. And what an interesting game and style from Rupard here. He just wants to make it messy. I love how active he's been with his army, too. It's, it's just he sees this. Okay, he knows about it. Doesn't seem that concerned about it. Big attack round. FedEx backs away, though. A couple long swords go in. Manganel's fire. Kill a lot of the range units. Board Villager does go down, which is actually a big thing with these siege pushes. But that means no repairs on the siege, but it also means no additional barracks or whatever building you would want if you're a part. Four mangonels. Not a whole lot else. This could be awkward. <laughs> and no repairing possible. You can tell. I think what you actually want to do here if you're apart is clear out more walls. You need to make sure you can move freely through here. Taking out the market's not the worst thing ever, though. More archers being made. More eagles being made. Still one TC for repart. Res collected. I'm going to check real quick. It's pretty close. But there's more villagers for FedEx. The FedEx landed a shot. Repard lands a shot. But FedEx can repair. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if we see a Vil walk the whole way around right now to go repair. It's that important. Holy scorpions, Batman. He's adding tons of scorpions. Is this guy Slavs? Does he have cheaper siege? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know if I've ever seen this much siege from the Mayans. Not really in their repertoire. Um. Okay. Let's get this push. I mean, he knows his longswords. It's not like Scorpions is a bad play, but that's a lot of them. And clock is kind of sort of ticking if you're on one TC. Crossbowmen will be helpful. Manganels go down there. FedEx is going to be really happy about this. He lands another shot. And this whole push is going to fall apart here. The Scorpions are going to hop out. But there's nothing to stop these Manganels from taking out the Scorpions. Well, yep. Okay. Rip to the push. This was such an expensive loss for Rapard. And might honestly lead to an immediate GG. It's all falling apart now. And the three TCs for FedEx... Is going to turn into four TCs. And the push is completely dead. Pretty much, I think. Sort of, yeah. Um, Vil count will rise. Repart just now adding that second TC. And I think what we saw here is just how awkward it was to have a new push over here. The initial barracks. Whoa! Okay. Uh, the Like, the initial barracks couldn't really support. This archer range wasn't that valuable to the initial push. But, I mean, he is pressuring over here. So that's something. Yeah, Urch. Um, I assume you were watching. You might have been, I don't know, maybe you are watching MBL earlier with this series. But I'm pretty sure if I know MBL that he probably reacted in some way <laughs> when, when Nilly killed three of his own villagers. Um, so I'm, I'm going to hope to put Hardy on it and get a bit of an edit made for that moment. It was a... Really sad moment for Nilly, but a really funny moment to watch. <laughs> like, look at Rapard. He's got so many different areas he wants to hit. But it's just so tricky, man. Like, these units aren't valuable because they're not with these units. FedEx's defense has been really good, though. Like, he's kept himself nice and compact. And his eco is getting better and better. 66 villagers versus 55. 
Rippard really wants to hold on to this side. Because if he can if this can live in FedEx's mind, if this can still be a threat, then this army could have more success. Uh, but the second you lose this, then suddenly this will be FedEx's only focus. Four TCs for Rippard though. Nice recovery. I thought it could be worse. Or I thought it could be worse. It absolutely could be worse. But he's late to that fourth TC. I feel like Rats and Archer makes the most sense now in the long term for FedEx. I'm dropping a castle. Getting some archers out. You see primarily archers from Rippard. Open into archers. Force your opponent back into eagles. You already have supplies. You already have long swords. Okay, players were chopping towards each other here, so we've got a tower from Rippard. It could always be taken out by the mangonels that just stick out the archery range. And FedEx just chilling. He's got a massive score lead right now. But I thought the Ville... Like, if I were to see this score, I'd think I'm 30 Vils behind right now from Rippard. I'm trying his best. Takes out the ram. Microing where he can. Good micro. Awkward, though, to micro this and macro at the same time, of course. And pretty easy for FedEx to just swing over a couple more Scorpions or a couple more Mangonels to defend from this. Don't know where this guy's going. Was he clicked to a tree that's beyond the wood line there? He's going to die. And Eagles dive in toward the Scorpions. All the Eagles will die. Um, but the Scorpions go down and the Crossbows are still around. So, yeah, this isn't too bad. Rippard has done a really good job at sticking around, being annoying. Might be able to take this one later into the game. Again, he's asking questions of FedEx. FedEx has answered a lot of these questions, but he's making FedEx work for it. Look at the idle TC time for FedEx compared to uh, Rippard right now. I like this idea from FedEx, but Rippard has the potential to stop that. He's probably just not looking at it. Oh, what a big miss. That would be a couple of villagers killed. And of course, if this door gets shut, he can't really surprise uh, FedEx anymore. FedEx is going to see that. FedEx walling this up. So this will be completely walled. And Eagles are just going to dive right in. And we're going to see a castle here? FedEx, you're crazy, dude. But okay. If that's really when you, where you want to place your castle, go ahead. <laughs> no, you delete that, right? Don't place that castle. It's such a weird castle. Okay, deletes it. But it's indecision because of the aggression from Rapard. This is good stuff from him. He does get the crossbows here. It's unfortunate it's not open right now. God, if that was open still, I mean, it would have added so much to his attack. But yeah, eagles are going to die. And we will see Imp eventually here. Yeah, Rapard's castle is a bit interesting. I think Rapard placed this castle because he wants to go plumes. But I still think your castle should be around here. He's Because you don't want the forward castle if you think your Imp time will suffer. But this is a low confidence castle if I've ever seen it. His eco is shot up though. Let's look at res collected. So, it's higher for FedEx, but it's higher with wood. Um, it's higher with wood and gold, which I guess makes sense. Oh, man. FedEx's eco. Pretty rough. He, he's up to 20 long swords. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is a lot of long swords. That's enough long swords where if he runs over here, he could start nuking TCs. And there goes Rapard on the way to Imp. Rapard used one of his petards. Rapard, petard. Um, <laughs> very hard for me to avoid saying a certain word. <laughs> one who avoids saying. Um, but yeah, anyways, he's he's busted through here. And again, he's just going to be a, annoying towards FedEx. His FedEx drops a much better castle than what his initial idea was. This is kind of cool looking. Um... And he's going to drop it here, which is fine. I feel like if you build a somewhat defensive castle or offensive castle, even and it's next to a stone, you're kind of like, well, regardless of how good or bad the castle placement is, 
I'm at least protecting more stone. I can mine more stone. Build another castle. The last thing Rapart is going to expect is the longsword rush from this side. Like, I think he's expecting there to be maybe five longswords out, but not a massive commitment from Rapart. Uh, from FedEx, rather. And honestly, with how focused he is on the micro here, he might not even end up noticing this. He should notice it. And yeah, okay, he does notice right away. But that's going to be awkward. Villagers are coming forward here from Rapard, who wants to win the early Treb War. And he's got quite a large, massive army. <laughs> but he has to defend from the longsword here. And Eagle's Plumes. And I thought it would be Rats and Archers and Swordsmen. We're kind of getting there, but I think FedEx realizes that Rats and Archer isn't realistic for him because he's just got one castle. He doesn't feel like he can commit to it. I honestly think FedEx should have gone for this TC. I, it, it might not have worked, and he's getting a lot of value from this, but I think he could have taken this TC out and killed all those villagers. But when your opponent's on archers and already has bodkin arrow, it's kind of tough to justify that. Look how messy this is. Look at the longsword still being alive and doing their thing over here is doing. This is so messy. Treb's on the way from both. Holy crap, man. The only archer unit that Rapard has is plumes. And he's using the castles for Trebs right now. So, like, these longswords are doing so much! These longswords could, like, win him the game! We've got Eldorado now for eagles that are not elite yet. It's so tough to get the balance right right now. If you're Rapard, he's, he's probably surprised these longswords are doing so much. He's got idle time on top of more idle time over here. Meanwhile, these villagers are super exposed. And these eagles that don't have Eldorado yet, they don't have the imp armor yet, they're going underneath castle fire, they're going up against lots of units, and it's it's not looking so good for uh, Rapard on the front now. All because of that longsword raid. The idle time shot up significantly for Rapard because of that. And if you have any questions, like, the big thing we should be saying is, where's Elite Eagle? You know, why did you get Eldorado? It's because of the rush. It's because of the longswords. He's been so distracted. And look at the mangonels. Get it to Treb. Worth it. Definitely worth it. I love the upgrade prioritization here from FedEx. I love how many upgrades he has in on the skirms already. And I love how he's already on two-handed swordsman. He's dropped more barracks. And he's prepping for an answer to the eagles. I'm sure there was a little bit of uncertainty and confusion on what his opponent's going to go for. Because you'd think he would have seen the eagle by now. But, um, yeah, Skirm, Champ, looking pretty good. Both players need to repair their Trebs right now. It's three Relics for FedEx, by the way. Not to mention with Paper Money, his sieve brings in gold from Chopping Trees. I don't think he got the tech yet. FedEx has crazy balance, considering how messy this game has been. It's pretty ridiculous. He's got 190 pop. He's got 60 army. And he's got the perfect army composition against what his opponent's going for. With great blacksmith upgrades. I know he's not a champion yet, but the fact that he's on full armor on these two-handed swordsmen is awesome. He takes the fight underneath the castle. And he's got the bombard cannons going for the trebs here from Rapard. And Rapard's not going to have a whole lot left after this, guys. I'm not sure Rapard's going to really be able to stop this uh, army comp if it continues to move out across the map. Now, he does have 100 HP on these Eagles, so they can take some shots. But at the end of the day, I think the, the two-handed swordsman is, is going to be enough versus the Eagles. And the Eagles, of course, are extremely costly as well. Having said that, Eldorado, what an upgrade. Man, I wonder if the timing was a little bit different for Rapard. If he would have had Elite Eagle with Eldorado initially, even with the first 5 to 10 Eagles, if maybe he could have sniped more Trebs. Because it did feel like while the army count was high for FedEx, a lot of it was skirm numbers. And the skirm numbers did more than they probably should have early. But it was because of the extra longswords. It's just like, why would you... 
<laughs> you never expect. You're showing your opponent plumed archers, and they show up with 20 longswords? He's probably so confused. 70 army versus 30. The 30 army we're seeing, though, is 100 HP eagles. I think you just you just force it if you're apart. Oh, God. This brings me so much pain. He's thinking, I, I don't have time to mix in other things. I have to win this fight now. It has to happen. And, well, it didn't happen, and he calls the GG. That was a really interesting game. I Honestly, it was ba more back and forth than I expected. Initially, I was I was really impressed with FedEx's defense and eco, but then I was really impressed with how Rapard even did I say repressed? I was impressed at how he just hung at, hung around. Um, he lost like five mangonels and four scorpions here, and was behind by ten vills, and was behind by two town centers. This game still went to imp. Rapard still got into a position where he had more vills than FedEx. So Rapard's a fighter, um, but you know his strat. To make it messy uh, wasn't good enough for FedEx here. And FedEx was able to stabilize really well. Uh, shout out, though, to the 20 longswords that went to that right-hand side. Because, honestly, I think they might have won in this game. Rapard had 20 to 30 villagers that were idle. And he wasn't able to focus on getting the right technologies and, and micering in the most important area of the map because of the distraction on this side. And honestly, I, I think FedEx, he didn't make those longswords for a counterattack. It was because of all the raids coming in towards his base, and he probably just created a bunch. When, and then he was like, oh, I have no use for these. <laughs> so let's just send them over. And it, it worked wonders there. So guys, this is so freaking epic right now in this group, just to restate the situation. So um, there's six players in the group. You've got MBL and you've got Dark at the top, okay? But then... You have Nilly and you have Kazva who have played three rounds and they have three wins after three rounds, okay? As it stands, the live standings for Repart FedEx, they also have three wins after three rounds. So one player is going to jump up to third place and it's going to be either Repart or FedEx uh, based on who wins this next game. Every win is so important. This is perfect in terms of like the drama from, uh, you know, the relegation standpoint. And actually, it's wild. Like, if you place in third place, you go into the playoffs. You win in the playoffs, you can move on and be promoted to the top 24 later on. So, um, but yeah, we obviously are getting a bit ahead of ourselves. Let's find game three. Okay, so here we are, game three. I love this map. I think this map is really cool. And in Titans League Season 3, we don't have Arabia. For everyone who loves Arabia, this is basically your Arabia. Um... So yeah, um, anyways, it's similar to Arabia, but let's talk about what's different. So you've got lots of tiny little wood lines, which makes it open, makes it aggressive. It's mainly lands. Uh, some versions of graveyards have water. In this case, we've got like the ponds dried up, which is kind of cool looking. Uh, but the main difference is the way the gold's distributed. So you've got gold more spread out around this map. And then there's lots of relics. I think there's a total of seven relics on this version. I'm going to check now. It's ten, excuse me. So... Uh, and if you are looking to fight for relics, you might want to play as the Lithuanians. And FedEx is playing as the Lithuanians. However, his opponent is trying to steal his boar. Rapard doesn't know FedEx's TC is there. Oh, now he does. This is kind of a weird boar steal. And normally, you don't want to run towards your opponent's town center when you're stealing a boar. And FedEx might not have even known that boar was there. If Rapard would have located this TC, if he knew, and he would have just looped the other way, it might have been the easiest steal ever, but, oh, man. I mean, Scout's faster than the Eagle, and it was kind of a gift. Look! <laughs> now FedEx doesn't even need to lure it. <laughs> uh, That's kind of funny. It was going back where it started. <laughs> it just waltzed right by FedEx's TC. FedEx is like, thanks, bro. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's funny. Well, not the start you would have wanted here if you're a part. Uh, Incas have a lot of flexibility, but because the Eagle is stronger than the Scout in a 1v1 engagement in Dark Age, a lot of players try and use the Eagle to lame like that and be aggressive. So now your Eagle can't get as much value. And uh, a FedEx probably pretty happy with the fact he can see his other boar. 
I'm pretty happy with the fact that that eagle will be of less uh, value now to Rapart. So I think scouts makes the most sense here is the Lithuanians. Could always see something different, but I think it just it it's playing towards your strengths and scout rush is pretty smooth with the Lithuanians. They start with the extra hundred food. They want to be on stable units in most cases, so why not just use the food, go to feudal, make some scouts, get going from there. I think where it can get tricky is up against man at arm builds, though. Um, because man at arms typically goes in towards archers then. And you'll see the Lithuanian player want to make skirms and it's this interesting back and forth because if you make too many skirms and then your opponent has eagles, you could kind of run into some problems. But of course, what's good against eagles is then monks. Uh, sorry, what's good against eagles is then knights. But then the Incas have monks versus the knights or pikemen versus the knights. And there's skirms that could work for those things. And it's an interesting back and forth. Incas are kind of a jack of all trades, master of none civilization. So they don't really have a unit that they are weak against. They can counter any type of unit. Uh, and they've been buffed recently, so um, they have a food discount on their military units too. So Incas are very strong. But think about it this way. In order to go for scouts, uh, you go barracks, stable, right? But in this matchup, you have no use from that barracks early on. Because what are you going to do? Make spearmen? Against the Civ that can't make horsemen? No. So you're realistically building up towards just the stable and producing out of one military building. Mezzo, they're producing out of two military buildings almost constantly. They'll go over the barracks, usually, uh, militia, and then they go archers. And then it's like they add in eagles, and they're also spearmen. So you've got two production buildings versus one, which is why the Incas or Aztecs or Mayans can be um, very smothering in their pressure. Especially the Aztecs, because they do produce military faster, too. Uh, one second, my nose is bothering me. Okay. You're basically saying Khmer is OP against Mezzo. Not OP, but I mean they're they're pretty solid. <laughs> okay, so this is uh the Frush. The French Drush. Two militia, Eagle. Eagle being weaker will obviously hurt the uh the chances of this having success, but still could be really annoying. And players do this because it's very low investment. Seems like it's going to be scouts from FedEx, who's gone for a double lumber camp. The very interesting wood lines here. But FedEx hasn't scouted the fact that his opponent has gone for the militia. He's going to find out the hard way. He could lose a villager to this. But again, the eagle being weak means he can't block effectively. So, I mean, it's still going to be annoying for FedEx here, but... Eagle being weak, the difference between a villager kill or no villager kill. A stable coming up for FedEx now. FedEx trying to save his vills. And it's good for him that he has so much food banked up because otherwise sometimes leaving the berries could be awkward. Don't think the two militia really accomplished what they were set out to, what they set out to do here, but it's crazy, right? Like all comes back as FedEx now has killed three units and lost zero and still has really healthy HP on his military units. All comes back to that opening. And now you you know your opponent's follow-up is going to be archers, so you can go into a range. The Lithuanians have fast skirms. Now, earlier when I talked about um, how you know, skirms come out, then you can go into eagles. That's obviously very true. I'm not lying to you about that. But eagles do take 60 seconds to produce in feudal. So it is less likely that that switch is going to be effective now. It's more likely a bit later in the game. It's most likely going to be Spearmen initially, which Skirms are also still pretty good against. This is Rapard's home map. We have four players out of the six in this group right now at three wins after three rounds. Of course, this will conclude the third round for Rapard and FedEx. One player then is going to go to third place behind Dark and MBL, and they will be at four wins after three rounds, which will be very valuable. And it feels like it's going to be a nail-biter between four players in this group. And it probably, like, 
I, I'm just gonna say there's gonna be tiebreakers involved. <laughs> it's like it, it sets one um, head to head, all that stuff. I feel like tiebreakers. We had a four way tie in platinum last season, uh, so it's not that out of the question. Oh man, I I would feel I just feel so useless right now from Rapard. I feel like Rapard's current position is the position I always find myself in if I try and play the two militia style. Better players with the two militia, they get more value from it initially, and then the archer follow up happens before the skirms happen. FedEx has played so freaking clean here though, and he's played aggressive too. Like he didn't waste any time. Good for a part that he got the walls down here, though, because otherwise his, his whole army would be exposed here. At least now he can maybe work in a couple eagles. I think ideally he would have been producing eagles this whole time, so he'd have about two or three right now. It's Instead, it looked like he opted for fletching, but I'm not sure what fletching does. The skirms are going to be so scary. Okay, there's the eagle. Now, obviously, the eagle will die to those scouts, right? So you've got to pull that eagle back. Good micro. Fletching coming in for FedEx as well. He kept many of his skirms at home because he was worried about an attack. We now know Rapart is at home. This could be a really big battle in a second. Five scouts, soon to be eight skirms with fletching versus seven archers, two spears, two eagles soon i mean the army's not not all here and the skirms can choose to take the fight look at this what are you gonna do bring in your eagles go ahead i'll just run away from you this is this is power of lithuanians baby really like the the play from fedex that there's just not enough eagles here and that eagle is forced to attack it will die five kills zero deaths for fedex and his eco is flying behind this make that six kills i don't think he's gonna lose a unit I'm not seeing how the situation changes, of course, unless he missed micros, which is possible. He's human. Spearmen in that TC are very weak, by the way. They'll just get destroyed immediately as we see a second barracks in Feudal Age now. FedEx is... He just wants the archers and spearmen kills. He says, okay. All right. Going to get another kill. Thank you. He, he's, he's up to nine kills, zero deaths. Ten kills, zero deaths. Eleven kills, zero deaths. Lose a unit. Thank you. Okay, now suddenly, you know, Rapard's feeling great because he's killed one unit and he's lost 13. This is going to be over here, isn't it? This isn't going to Castle Age. And if it goes to Castle Age, it feels like it might be over in early Castle Age because this is devastating. So much army has been lost here. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, though, right? Like, villagers haven't exactly died yet. 18 to 4 KD, though, is pretty awful. The skirms just don't have a lot of firepower to be able to kill Vils. FedEx is micro. Looking sick here. Happy to take out all the spearmen. And take out all of the... Um, uh, what Words. Uh, archers. So now, obviously, it's going to be just eagles from Rapard. And the positive for him is he only lost one villager. And all his opponent has right now is actually skirms. So, um, FedEx, you might want to save this scout and go scout the relics for later on in this game. But at least the eco losses weren't too bad. The skirms got, certainly, you got excellent value there. Look at the amount of farming eco. This will probably be a play into two stables. I like how confident FedEx played here. This is not his home map. Rapard's the player who prefers the open maps. Look how open he's played. This is good. A lot of players will try and wall it. He says, nah, man. Army is important for me here. Did add two fresh scouts. And so he can still pose a bit of a threat. But Rapard is up. And Rapard can produce eagles while he's on his way to Castle Age, too. His eco is pretty disgusting. I'd like to see a mining camp on this gold. But he's got some things to sort out here. <laughs> Skirms are actually helping a lot right now. Because <laughs> how many does he have? Eight? Seven? So, you know, they do one damage a hit. But, you know, that's... You get five volleys, you kill an eagle. The math's not perfect there, but... Yeah, eco's very close here. I also think resources brought in 
there's going to be tons of food for FedEx, which is going to bode very well for him. It feels like his his eco is is balanced, um, a lot nicer, and and he's going to get more eagle kills. Oh my goodness, his micro has been ridiculous. And yeah, I was just going to say the only thing I'd like to see from him is save the weak scouts and just scout the rest of the map because you're going to want relics. Love the fact he's even going to go three stables here. Because you have seen three barracks from your opponent, and now you see a fourth barracks. Three stable knights makes a lot of sense. If you're thinking, why not four? Four is better than three. I don't honestly think he could justify it. I don't think he can produce out of it, so it's just not... You gotta save some wood for the monastery. Or uh, reseeding farms or something. Anyways, Castlage is in for a part. Castle is now in for FedEx. Going to see the scouts engage here. And we should see a monastery for both. I've loved FedEx's micro here. Now there's the monastery. Placing it in the back of his base just to be safe. <laughs> no like have upgrade for him. And didn't save weak scouts to scout the rest of the map. Which personally I think players should be doing here. But... He's always focused on that fight, always making sure he's taking good engagements. Repard still no Eagle Warrior upgrade, and still doesn't have his first Monk out, so the Knights are doing quite a bit here, but that is a lot of Eagles. 11 army for both. There's 7 Skirms in FedEx's army. That does not help him now. He only has 4 Knights. He only has 6 on gold. He honestly, he needs way more on gold. That's a little concerning. Feels like maybe if he like loses a knight to a conversion, suddenly he doesn't have many knights at all and he can start to lose every engagement. Great job from Rapard to to somehow stay in this economically. Like it looked really bad for him when he started losing his military. The scouts, will they pay off? They do and they kill the monk. Scout still lives to tell the tale, too. That is more than worth it. That's why you want to produce extra scouts if you can here. Still no relics collected for FedEx. As I say it, though, he's going to get one. Imagine if he knew about these. Now, that's plus one attack on his knights. On top of the plus one attack, he already researched. So all of his knights have 10 plus two now. He liked just two relics, and suddenly these fights are going to be so much more efficient for you. But you need to get the Eagle Warrior upgrade if you're a part. I don't think Pikeman's the right play because he doesn't have the food eco for it, but you need to have Eagle Warrior. Oh, goodness. FedEx takes the fight. There's no Eagle Warrior. He will lose a knight to a conversion. He'll lose a second knight to a conversion as well. But it takes so long to mass these Eagles, and these knights are so extremely powerful. And even though some knights will switch sides, he's also going to be able to kill the monks. And the KD's 49 to 19 right now. With FedEx in a position to, to move all the way over here and maybe kill the villagers off of gold. This game has been all FedEx in terms of the fights. But Rapard's still alive. Like, that's the thing about Rapard. He doesn't die easily. The previous game, I thought the game was over after he lost his initial push and the game still went to Imp and he still had a chance. I'm not willing to doubt the guy just yet, but this isn't going to help him. The knights have looped their way around. There's also knights here, so Rapard is focused on both areas. I, I said he sorry, I said he was focused in both areas. He was just straight up distracted. <laughs> he didn't realize he was getting hit on the gold because of the other army. And FedEx happy to loop in, kill another monk, kill a few more villagers. <laughs> Rapard's gonna have three knights though? <laughs> Uh, actually, Rapard's gonna have four knights? Rapard has four knights. Decent upgrades as well. Heal him up! <laughs> Look how many buildings Rapard has. Rapard has four barracks. He's gonna have four monasteries! Okay, so he's just, he's just YOLO right now on monks. So FedEx, because he's cleared out the eagles, his best friend now is actually Lightcap. Um, but it's, it's a bit tempting to just go all in knights when you have so much attack. But you can lose games. I've seen people lose from positions like this before because they just don't go like F. 
and then they run into like six night uh six monks and they think oh i can kill them i can kill them before the conversions come in and then the conversions come in and things could snowball okay that's gonna be three relics he's at least he's definitely gonna get to four right so the attack is gonna be insane but there's another conversion <laughs> Oh, this could be a good find, though. Okay, so there's the main force for Rapard here, which includes a lot of monks. We now see the Light Cav upgrade because of it. Scout gets converted. Wow, Rapard reacted to this. That's insane. Okay, so Rapard knows about that. Still has to pay attention to his monks here while also defending here. Converted another knight. Can convert another knight. There's also a monk there, which could get another conversion. Thank you, Pathing. Units moving around. That's a scout that was converted. It's going to kill a monk. This is so messy right now. Light Cav are waiting. Knights are waiting too. You clear out these monks, all these eagles die. And you can continue this amazing KD you're having, FedEx. Oh, there's the Light Cav. There you go. No Sanctity. No, Sanctity's in. Excuse me. But the monks, all oh, they switch targets. They're moving around in the Light Cav. I mean, that's that's enough, right? That should be enough where you can still clear up everything here. And the monk does go down. FedEx will win that fight. It's still an even game in terms of the economy. But again, it does feel like the army situation is so superior for FedEx. And I think the efficiency, too. Let's look res collected. Yeah, he's collected 1,300 more resources. Three relics, probably more soon for the Lithuanian player. And he just... Lightcap is his best friend. He needs to stop making knights. Just stop doing it, dude. <laughs> Your opponent has insane amounts of monks. Do not give him knights. Lightcap is the way. I know the temptation's real right now. You have 12 knights already? You just need a few more Lightcap. And there's going to be relic number four, which I know a lot of people were asking for and hoping for. Oof, this could, this could still be tricky. There's ten monks. But I think with a bit of patience here, even if you have to leave this gold, it's fine. Just like, whatever you do, do not take a bad fight. Oh, man. <laughs> They're everywhere. Okay, this is smart. Try and get the reinforcements here. Try and attack here, where his repart's going to be focused here. Oh, God. Okay, so there's a lot happening. But the conversions are not happening for Rapard. Oh, disaster! I expected it to be better than this. But FedEx, he's going to clear this up. And Rapard GG's. And with that victory, which is very well played from FedEx, uh, FedEx catapults himself into third place in the overall standings. Still a really interesting group. Because you've got MBL at the top. I'm going off memory. I should probably check it. Um, but MBL's first. I think with eight wins. I think you've got Dark. I believe... I, I know Dark's second. I think he's at six wins. Um, and then you have FedEx at four. You then have Nili. You have Kazva. And then you have... <clears throat> um, who am I forgetting here? Oh, Repart, of course. Uh, sitting at three wins in that group so it'll be very interesting i i don't know what matchups are happening but like all the players who are at like the last four players in that group i think when they play each other will be really fun sets um but yeah fedex looked really good here really really good honestly here's my take on Rapard. both games that he lost he tried to force the issue really early uh and it didn't work out right like he he was too extreme with his attacks but then he did an excellent job with his economy and his overall play honestly i think Rapard is is showed me he's good enough he doesn't need like these super extreme all-in attacks i actually think that with the way he has been playing after he falls behind in games you know maybe at least against player fedex's caliber maybe he doesn't actually need to go all in but you know that's kind of his strat right be very aggressive initially in an early lead and then just snowball them to, to death. And FedEx was just able to defend from it super well. And it felt like Lithuanian choice 
the scout skirms, everything in feudal, everything looks super smooth from FedEx here. GG.